Hey everybody, it's me, John Ward, and I am back with another Dark Park Film Reviews. And uh, this is kind of a last minute video. Um, I decided after work to go to a, uh, a Dollar Tree store that I've only been to once. And I remember that they had a lot of movies, but this was months and months ago. And I just keep driving past it and I never stop off at it. And uh, I keep hitting the same stores that just don't seem to have anything new. Um, the last time that they had new stuff was probably around Christmas. And uh, so I'm like, well, let me just stop off. Why not I'll take a look? Maybe I could do some shopping while I'm there. And to my surprise, they had an entire in cap of films that were in these cardboard containers. So they were basically kind of like doing a, a like a thing here and a thing here. So they were like, you know, one long and one long is like a two wide type of thing. I'm, I'm trying to describe something here. And uh, uh, a lot of them I had, but there were a bunch I've never seen before. So I wanted to make this video to let you guys know, I think Dollar Tree might be back. Um, I'm going to stop off at another one that I go to tomorrow on my lunch break and see maybe if they also um, got some new movies in. But I picked up 19 films, um, most DVD. A couple of them are Blu-ray. I'm going to do half of them now, and then probably next week I'll do the other half. Um, I already have something planned for uh, for like Friday. And uh, like Friday or Saturday, um, no, um, no one filmmaker this week. Um, I'm looking over a few films, talking to a couple directors and um, just uh, I've this is we're going on. Uh, uh, well, I had to take a break, but yeah, I did two weeks of six days straight at work and I was just exhausted and slept most of the days on when on uh, uh, Sundays. See, I'm, I'm still kind of out of it. So um, I'll see about next week having a one filmmaker. But uh, for this video, um, this is to let you guys know, look for these. Because uh, some of these I've never heard of before. And um, so we're going to start with a Blu-ray. And until I saw that it said Shudder, I would have never guessed that this was a, a film that was on Shudder. And it's called A Blue Bird in My Heart. A strange name for a horror movie. And uh, I cut out the little shutter thing on the plastic and put it in here to remind myself to uh, put this with my, my shutter films. But uh, and it says, you can't outrun your demons. You know, let me make this cover as a little, I don't want it to get damaged. Let's fix this while I got it right here. There we go, that's better. We make the shutter thing look a little nicer. There we go. There we go. That looks better. Um, and it says, you can't outrun your demons. And it looks like it's a, a guy in a bathroom. He's like sitting in the, uh, sitting on like the bathtub, you know, uh, the shower. And uh, yeah, it looks like this could be a, a French film. Maybe. It's adapted from a novel called The Dishwasher. And I and I would not be able to uh, give you any of these. Oh, Belgium? So French. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to pronounce any of these guys' names. Or gals. Uh, but it uh, looks like it's uh, 95 minutes, lots of subtitles, not rated. Um, Shutter and RLJE Films. Lots of distribution companies along here. Um, Taunt Performances and Slick cinema Cinematography, The Hollywood Reporter. Yeah, I've never... There's our Shutter thing inside there. We've seen those before. But what a strange name for a horror movie, 2020. Oh, it looks like 2017 came out 2020, according to the disc. 
this is this is short. So let's see, because I haven't looked or read any of these. So let's see. I just saw that it said Shudder and I grabbed it. Um, let's see, attempting to lead a quiet, reformed life, an ex-con finds refuge in a motel run by a single mother and her daughter, Clara. The peace and freedom he has found in this safe haven disappears when Clara is assaulted, forcing him to face his old demons and extract revenge. Oh, so maybe it's not a horror movie. Looks like maybe it's a revenge movie. And you can't outrun your demons will be your past. So it won't, it's not like demons, you know, like monster demons, but uh, demons of the mind. Um, so, okay. So might be a, a revenge movie, like a thriller, but it's on Shudder. Okay. So that's the first one. A Bluebird in My Heart. <coughs> Interesting title. The next one is, I was very excited to find this one. And this kind of goes along with like those Roger Corman collections that I found. Um, and this one is the Screaming Skull Collection. Or just Screaming Skull Collection, no the. And this has eight creature features on two DVDs. It is featuring the Screaming Skull, the Mad Monster, Tormented, Scared to Death, Adam Age Vampire, and more. I like that cover. And let's see, it is starring Bella Lugosi, Faye Ray, Melvin Douglas, George Zuko, Glenn Strange, and more. Uh, this is from Popflix, who also did those Roger Corman ones. Um, and yeah, here's the, oh, did I? I don't think I showed you guys the back of this one. But there's no special features or anything listed on this. Might just be the movie then. There's its side. Back to Screaming Skull Collection. Um, so here we have its back. The Roger Corman ones, they put the posters up, but they didn't give a, uh, a description of the, uh, of the movies. So this is Digitally Remastered Interactive Menu. So these are always fun because a lot of these are public domain. So they just chuck on a whole bunch of public domain movies. Um, and uh, I know that's Adam Age Vampire. I'm not sure which this one. Uh, that one doesn't look familiar to me. Uh, the running time is 19 hours and 17 minutes. Playable in all regions. Came out in 2013. And let's see. So the Screaming Skull. Uh, doesn't have anybody I recognize. The Mad Monster has George Zuko. That's always a good thing. Oh, and Glenn Strange. He's also in that one. The Vampire Bat has Faye Ray. Lyle Atwell. Marvin Douglas. The Monster Maker, J. Carol Nash. Oh, The Mad Monster and Monster Maker, same director, Sam Newfield. Tormented has uh, Richard Carlson and is directed by Bird Eye Gordon. Scared to Death, which is a great Bela Lugosi movie. So that's Bela Lugosi and George Zuko. Adam Age Vampire. Don't know anybody in that one. It's a good one, though. Dead Men Walk, George Zuko. And also uh, Sam Newfield. So that's the Mad Monster, Monster Maker, and Dead Men Walk, all by uh, Sam Newfield. Yeah, this is what I wish they kind of did with those, the Roger Corman ones, which is that you put in uh, like an even amount of films on instead of five, you do six films. And then that way you do three per disc. This is eight. So there's four movies on each disc. And I like that. It makes more sense to even them out. Maybe they didn't have more Roger Corman films. I don't know. But uh, 
I mean, there's a lot of early Roger Corman films that are public domain. But this has on disc one, The Screaming Skull, The Mad Monster, The Vampire Bat, and The Monster Maker. And then disc two is Tormented, Scared to Death, Adam Age Vampire, and Dead Men Walk. I'll have to see, because these don't give running times or if they're color or black and white. There's two versions of Scared Death, Scared to Death with Bella Lugosi. Uh, there's a black and white version and a, a color version. Um, it's one of the few films that he did in color. So, yeah, so that's pretty cool. So if you can find this, pick this up. This is a good collection. The next one I was very happy about finding because this director has become quite notorious. And um, it is uh, The Murder of Nicole Brown Simpson. And it is directed by Daniel Ferens. And um, if you go on to, uh, you know, if you're on YouTube, look for Amanda the Jedi. She reviews all, you know, all of his movies. And, and she's, it, it's, it's like they're the, the complete opposites of each other. But like, like, this is her nemesis in a way. Um, so it's, uh, uh, her channel is, is worth checking out in, in, with her reviewing these movies. But um, yeah, it, it's very interesting to, to see the take that he, that he does on this you know, on, you know, in this film. So my big problem with this is even if you're going with a different take and I'm not going to say what that take is because it is a conspiracy theory that's out there. Um, if you're going to do this and if you're going to exploit Nicole Brown Simpson and make this movie, because that's, that's basically what this director does is he takes these real life situations. Um, he also did the Amityville murders and, um, makes these movies is you need to go all out and that was my one of my biggest complaints with this is that it wasn't bloody enough if you're if you're going to show her murder you know and um and stuff at the end then you need to go all out if you're already going to exploit it exploit it a hundred percent and go all out. Don't hold back. And um, so that that was probably my my problem with this. Um, I don't mind watching these types of movies because, um, you know, this director is not the only one who does it. I mean, they've done it with John Wayne Gacy. They've done it with Ted Bundy. They've done it with, you know, with with Dahmer. They've done it with you know all these different serial killers and and murderers and stuff like that. You know, Charles Manson. So I, I guess this isn't any different, except that it's you know a lot sooner than you know more current than those other ones. But if you're going to do it, do it. Go all the way out and do it. Um, so this. So here's the back. And I find it interesting when, when people do act in these types of movies, you know, it's not like it's a, um, like a, a film that is like, like a docudrama that's trying to be a hundred percent true. Um, you know, as close as they can get it to the truth, this, this is exploitative and, and it's, but if you go in with that, then, you know, you might be okay with it. See, so it says right down here, like, what if he didn't act alone? So that's the conspiracy theory, is that it, what if it wasn't just OJ? What if there was somebody with him? Because uh, there's been several, um, well, in fact, there, it'd be Nick Stahl right there. So um, I'd actually like to get this director on, um, you know, Daniel um, Farad's to be on one filmmaker and talk about one of his films. I'd like for him to talk about the Amityville horror film because I'm a big Amityville horror fan. So, um, so look at the, let's see. So inspired by true events, the film follows OJ Simpson's ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson in the last days leading up to her tragic death. 
on June 12, 1994, as seen from her point of view, it questions what role, if any, did Glenn Rogers, also known as the Casanova killer, play in the murder? Question mark. There he is right there. And then that's supposed to be Nicole and you know these three pictures here. Um, looks like it's widescreen, 85 minutes. It's rated R uh, for some strong bloody violence, language, sexuality, and brief drug material. Under 17 requires an accompanying parent or adult guardian. This is from Voltage Pictures, Skyline Entertainment. I mean, I mean, she is one of the producers on it, so I guess you can't say it's taking advantage, you know, even of the actress, if you're one of the producers on it. So, but I'd like to collect his films, and this is uh, 2019. Bundy, Br Br Bundy Brown Island, LLC, where the Bundy's in there. Rated R. He also has one on, uh, came out around the same time for Sharon Tate. that uh, I, I believe Sharon Tate's family was not happy with. So very interesting. Uh, the next one is called Space Force Battlefront. And here's its back. And uh, this is from Echo Bridge, widescreen, 73 minutes color. 2018, it's not rated. It's like we got a fair, fair amount of companies down here too. Devin Lynn Gile directed it maybe. Well, he did direct it. I just don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Probably not. Um, this kind of intrigues me. So I'm sorry, I'm going to read some of these. Uh, set 20, set, set 20, set 250 years in the future, Space Force Battlefront is a realistic, well, I guess I'll be the judge of that when I watch this. And so will you if you if you purchase this um, realistic hard science fiction film that follows the first crew of astronauts sent into deep space. Humanity is at a crucial point for survival. So when deep space, so when the deep space forward operating base oh becomes stranded, their chances of completing their already impossible mission begin to look bleak that's when they realize that they're not alone i don't recognize anybody in it yeah a lot of these i've never heard of or seen before so no special features or anything listed now this next one is one that i was happy to find it this kind of sucked so I originally found this film at a different Dollar Tree. Zombie movie. I was, I, I was excited to watch it. And um, I was going to watch it and review it for reviews after midnight over on Indie Film Cafe. And for some reason, its slipcase was all like um, water damaged. And I don't know why, because it came in plastic. And the disc was fine but the cover was all messed up. And so I put the movie in and I started to watch it. And it's actually a zombie film from the point of view of a little girl. Now I only made it through about five, five, 10 minutes. So I don't know if it sticks with that, but 
I thought this looks really interesting, but I'm really pissed off about the slip jacket being all messed up. So I stopped it and I did something else and it's been kind of sitting on the side. So I went to my usual stores and couldn't find it again. So then I put out the word to Jonathan and Paul from Any Film Cafe. If you happen to come across this movie, pick it up for me, I'll pay you back. And um, eventually I said, damn it, I want to watch this movie and review it. So I bought it from eBay for like five bucks. You know, it was like $2 plus $3 shipping and handling or something. So now I'm already paying, you know, a lot more for it than if I found it at Dollar Tree. Well, of course, today when I go to the store that I haven't been to in months, they have it. So now I own two copies of it. And um, it's Kill Another Day, It's Your Life, dot, 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 or, or It's Your Life, dot, 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 or Theirs. And um, it does show some zombies and like the city all mashed up and all that. So I don't know if this guy comes into it later. But what I saw, which I said was between five and 10 minutes, it was from the point of view of this little girl. And um, so I don't know if this is completely false advertising or maybe he does show up later on. Um, but it intrigued me enough to where I wanted a nice copy of it. So now I have two nice copies of it. Um, I do like the cover. Um, it's got some good good coloring on it and stuff like that. Um, and here's its back. Got it side there. And this is once again Echo Bridge. And let's see, so it's widescreen. Oh, so it flips. Aspect ratio is 235 and also 16.9. And then in parentheses, it says the film intentionally changes aspect ratios. Huh. 83 minutes in color this is 2017 not rated uh directed by zachary ram lan rammy lan one of these days what these one of these filmmakers are, is going to leave a message going dude you totally like butchered my name um but this says here, told through the eyes of one desperate survivor. Little girl? Maybe him? Uh, kill another day is the end of the world. Is the end of the world as we know it. When an unknown illness ignites a full-blown epidemic, the world becomes overrun by blood-curdling zombies. Hell bent on returning home to his pregnant wife, David fights his way. Okay, so it must be him. Maybe I guess it flips. Fights his way across the city, assembling a small group of survivors along the way. When news surfaces about a young girl rumored to be immunized, oh, immune, rumored to be immune to the deadly infection, David leads the remaining survivors in a race against time to find the cure before it's too late so i bet that's where the the aspect ratios change so probably one aspect ratio is his the other aspect ratio is the little girl so i bet that's it so i do want to see this it looked kind of cool from the beginning oh it looks like the movie was actually 2016 but released from echo bridge 2017 i do like that back you got to read it sideways though like that Definitely on my list to watch. Uh, this is another one I've never heard of, and I have no idea who this actor is. Maybe one of you do. I guess I could look it up, but I'm too lazy. Um, Ed Westwick, uh, Flight from Hell, Dead on Arrival. I'm assuming that's the full title, and not just a tagline. But it's showing a, you know, a a, a plane here that's on fire. My thought. Okay, fly from hell, dead on arrival. Why not? Got it back here. So there's the plane, or a plane again. It's all kind of messed up. 
looks like maybe they got in a whole bunch of uh, Echo Bridge because this is Echo Bridge again. Not rated, 85 minutes, color, it's widescreen. Directed by Vincent, oh God, I'm not gonna be able to get that. Uh, Z-H-O-U. Zoo? I don't know. Um, came out 2017, but was made 2016. Bangkok, because it says here, sound by Technicolor Bangkok. It's SP releasing. Asian film distribution. So yeah, it looks like this might be a film from Bangkok. Flight 505 has departed, dot, 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 forever. Yeah, so here's the, but it looks like electricity is all over the plane. Here's the runway. Well, let's read this thing because it's not that long. Kind of curious what this, is this a horror movie? So it says Captain Charles Gillis, Ed Westwick, Gossip Girl. So he's from Gossip Girl. I never watched Gossip Girl, so I wouldn't know. I'm 54, so I, I don't think I've watched Gossip Girl. Uh, readies himself to pilot his final commercial flight before leaving the world of aviation behind to race cars, okay? With only nine passengers aboard the Red Eye flight, it seems as though Gillis and his cabin crew are in for an easy night. However, not long after the flight departs from a secluded Pacific island, things begin to take a turn for the strange when a mysterious entity begins to attack the passengers. That is not what I thought this was at all. I thought this was like uh, <coughs> uh, hijackers or something. Okay. Excuse me. Uh, passengers. With the lives of the passengers and crew online, Captain Gillis and his flight attendants must figure out what is happening and how to save everyone from impending disaster. All right, so it's more like a supernatural type of thing. It's probably why there's electricity all around the plane. Okay, all right. Funny how they don't put his picture on there. It's, it's the picture of the plane with the title. Okay, all right, all right. That might, that might be okay. There's uh, another one I've never heard of. Burning Kiss. The front looked... Interesting, so I judged it by its cover. And it's a DVD plus digital copy. Nothing else is on the cover here. Mm, there it goes. And I basically got it for this picture right here of this guy. I thought that looked interesting. Echo Bridge, not rated. Widescreen, 81 minutes, color, uh, 2019. Oh, maybe it came, it looks like they're flipped here. So 2018 is maybe when it was made, but it came out 2019. Written and directed by Robbie Studs, Studzor. Let's see, anybody? And it's got interesting colors. So I, I hate to be that type of guy that's, that's like, oh, look at all the pretty colors. I'll buy it. But that's kind of what I did. So let's see, in this surrealistic noir, Detective Edmund Bloom and his daughter Charlotte remain haunted by the car accident that left Edmund crippled and his wife dead. Years later, Edmund is still doggedly pursuing clues to uncover who is responsible for the accident. Then one day, a young man named Max comes forward and claims to have caused the collision. The detective then plots a complicated and otherwise, oh, complicated and unwise plan of revenge to put his revenge that puts his daughter in danger. Okay. 
revenge movie then, but they're calling it a surrealistic noir film. Okay, now these ones have slip jackets. We all know how, how much I like slip jackets. So, oh no, this has like a little, oh fuck, this has like a tear in it. Oh. Might have to buy another one if I find it, or not. Uh, so this is called Relic. Oh, I remember hearing about this one. This was talked about a lot. I remember this one. It, I, it just dawned on me what this is. Um, it's certified fresh from Rotten, Rotten Tomatoes, if that means anything to you. Uh, terrifying dot, 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 turns the haunted house story on its head. RogerEbert.com. It's from IFC Midnight Films. Yeah, that's right. I remember this. This is supposed to be pretty good. Uh, one review says... Uh, Exerts the ever tightening hold on the imagination. It's from David Rooney for the Hollywood Reporter. Oh, Emily uh, Mortimer. There she is. She's screaming right there. Uh, it's widescreen, 89 minutes, rated R for. Violence, disturbing images, and language. Oh, it's part of Shout Factory or Scream Factory, actually. It says Shout here, Scream over here. Yeah, it's yeah, part of Scream Factory. Two thousand nineteen came out. Two thousand twenty, directed by Natalie Erica James. Emily Mortimer, Robin Nevin, and Bella Health Coat star in star in star in an unforgettable new spin on haunted haunted house movie on the haunted house movie from first time writer director Natalie Erica James Relic. I don't know why they have to put relic after her name. That's weird. Just has her name and then it's a colon relic. We know it's relic. When elderly mother Edna inexplicably, inexplicably, inexplicably vanishes. Well, we know what I'm trying to say. This is not coming out right. Uh, her daughter Kay and granddaughter Sam rush to the family's decaying country home, finding clues of her increasingly dementia uh, scattered around the house in her absence after Ida returns. Just as mysteriously as she disappeared, Kay is concerned that her mother seems unwilling or unable to say where she's been, clashes with Sam's unabashed enthusiasm to have her grandmother back, as Edna's behavior turns increasingly volatile, both begin to sense that an insidious presence in the house might be taking control of her. I didn't read that well, or maybe it's how it's put together. Probably me. Let's see. Yeah, the same. Oh. Okay. Uh, special features audio descriptive track and trailer. Audio descriptive track. Sometimes they put these things in a weird way. Just say audio commentary. Audio descriptive track. Unless it's not a normal audio commentary, I guess. It just sounds weird. Different. Not the same. Okay. 
throws me off if this has a little tear on it. You guys should know me by now that I'm going to try to find a different one that does not have a little tear in it. But I think this was the only one at the Dollar Tree that had the slip jacket. If I can get it put back in here. There it goes. All right. And then our last one. I've heard very mixed about this. Spree. That's all done, I guess, from like the the camera in the car, because he's like a an, an Uber or Lyft driver and he's recording everything. And saying here 12 a.m. live, there's five percent of battery left. Collider says American Psycho for the Digital Age. Thrillist, a bloody fun ride through online hell. The Hollywood Reporter again, a serial killer flick that couldn't possibly be more of its moment. This is 2020 down here. Yeah, I've heard very, very mixed about this. Icon Cinema, a commanding lead performance by Stranger Things, Joe uh, Kearney. Joe Kearney. Oh, no, there is no N. Kiri. Joe Kiri. Joe Kiri. Says Stranger Things, but. I, I don't. I don't barely remember Stranger Things to be honest. I'm not a fan of Stranger Things, so liked his first couple seasons, and then it just kind of died out for me. Um, special features director audio commentary. See, that's all you got to say. You don't have to be weird about it. Kurt's World ninety six social media content. It was David Arquette. Uh, directed by Eugene, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce that last name. Does it have anybody else in this that's no? Kyle Mooney? Um, it's uh, RLJE Films, 92 minutes, widescreen. It's not rated. 2020, came out 2020? That's what it looks like. Uh, meet Kurt, a 23-year-old rideshare driver for Spree, who is so desperate for social media attention that he'll stop at nothing to go viral. He comes up with a plan to live stream, live stream a rampage as a shortcut to infamy. Coining his evil scheme, Hashtag the lesson, hashtag the lesson. He installs a set of cameras in his car and begins streaming his rides. Wildly miscalculating the popularity that would come from his lethal scheme, Kurt's desperation grows as he tries to find his way to overcome the plan's flaws. In the middle of this madness, a stand-up comedian with her own viral agenda crosses Kurt's path and becomes the only hope to put a stop to his misguided carnage. Yeah, that's kind of what I heard about this is that since it's all live, why the cops aren't just shutting him down, you know, just stop him. But I, I haven't seen this. I don't know enough about it. Same thing. All right, so that's that's all of them. That's all nine. So um, let's recap. We got Spree, Relic with a tear, sad, Burning Kiss, Flight from Hell, Dead on Arrival. 
kill another day. POV zombie. Space Force Battlefront. The Murder of Nicole Brown Simpson. There we go. Screaming Skull Collection with eight movies, eight, eight creature features on two DVDs. Definitely pick this up. And then the one Blu-ray, a bluebird in my heart, Shutter. Okay. And this is the uh, this is the other bag that has a bunch of stuff in it. So it also has like uh, eight or nine movies in it. So I'll get to that too. Interesting stuff in there. Okay, everybody. Thanks a lot. I appreciate you watching this. And um, I will see you soon. Please like, subscribe, comment, share, do all that good stuff. And uh, I really appreciate, uh, you know, everybody watching this video. And I will talk to everybody later. Be safe. Be kind. Bye.